challenges, chillax, they've been doing this without you for a while. In this segment, I wanna go over some challenges that you are definitely going to face. Okay, so the first thing is getting plants. The problem is that a lot of host plants are not plants that common nurseries carry. You're better off trying to find a specialty nursery in your area, not a big box store, but a local nursery that you can actually talk to the people and ask them what plants usually have caterpillars on them. Hi, this is Jessica Morgan McAtee, and I am at a plant nursery right now looking through passion vines, trying to find a one that's a host plant um, because I'm trying to get more for my gulfs, zebras, and julias. And a good way to look is find the plants that are really chewed up, like this one that I have here in my cart. And I mean, look, it's got caterpillars all over it. And the crazy thing about this plant is they have no label on it. They don't even have a price tag on it. But obviously it's being utilized as a host plant. So when you see them chewed up like this, you might ask the nursery, they might even give you a better deal on it because the plant looks pretty junky, but I can take it home and revive it. And at least I know it's a useful host plant, even without even knowing what it is, other than that it's some kind of, oh my gosh, look, it's even got a chrysalis. This one's like such a bonus one. It's got a live chrysalis on it. Oh, sold to the lady who's crazy about butterflies. Those are the plants you want. Most nurseries don't sell plants that have caterpillars on them because it's bad for business, and that's understandable. But what that means is when you're trying to plant a butterfly garden, it can be challenging to find the plants that you're looking for. Another challenge is no plants left. This is especially true if you have host plants with lots of caterpillars on them, they're going to eat your plants down to nothing. This happens a lot with monarch. And what that means is you're not gonna have any food left for your caterpillars and you're gonna start freaking out and you're gonna think, oh my gosh, they've eaten all my plants. Should I go to the store and buy another milkweed? And my answer to you is, do what you want. You can keep buying more plants if you'd like, or you can just resign to, this is what happens in nature and que sera, sera That's what I do in my yard. If they run out of food, they run out of food. Some species will almost always eat more plants than you can provide them. It can be difficult to provide them with enough leaves. So don't feel bad when they've eaten your plants down and you have no plants left. It happens. Pesticide treated plants. What I mean by that is you might buy a plant at a store or a nursery and they have put in systemic insecticides, which means uh, the plant already has insecticides in it and the reason they do that at the nursery is because they are trying to keep pests off of the plants, pests being caterpillars. So now when you bring it home, if your caterpillars eat that plant, they will die. And it happens a lot with milkweed and some of the big box stores sell milkweed for monarchs with those toxins in it. So my best suggestion for that, uh, if you have a plant that is seemingly killing your caterpillars, take heart, those pesticides, those insecticides in time will get out of the system of the plant. It just takes time. It could take several months. It depends on a bunch of factors, but the plant itself isn't garbage. Just give it time to rejuvenate healthy cells that don't have the toxins in it. Another thing is you can just ask stores. If you go to a local mom pop nursery, they might tell you whether or not they've treated the plants. Pests, since we don't use insecticides, we are inevitably at some point going to get plant pests and that's just part of it. Pesticide spraying. Now what I mean by this is sometimes neighborhoods like where I live, they have trucks that go down the street and spray for mosquitoes or planes that go overhead and drop insecticides. And those insecticides are indiscriminate. They will kill any insect they come in contact with. That can be very frustrating when you're a butterfly gardener because they're killing your butterflies. You can write to your local city governments, you can try to take action that way. Eventually those insecticides will work their way out of the system. Another thing that happens where I live is I irrigate out of a canal that's in my backyard. The city comes down the canal every so often and dumps a bunch of herbicides in it to kill the plants that are on the bank of the canal. And that means when I irrigate without water, I'm irrigating with herbicides. So it's kind of hard in urban areas to get around this because our governments are so used to using these chemicals and it is frustrating and it is something that will be a challenge predators, you are going to see dead caterpillars and dead butterflies if you have a butterfly garden. Homeowners associations and well-meaning neighbors might not like the looks of your butterfly garden. Your plants might get eaten, you might have weeds, you're gonna have 
may be a little bit wild looking. As I mentioned before, it might be helpful to put up a sign to help educate them about what's going on. When they understand what's going on, they might understand you a little bit better and allow it. Or maybe become active in your HOA or in your community and explain to them what's going on. There is a real shift towards being green and towards conservation right now, so it might be helpful for you to just voice your opinions and tell people why you are doing what you are doing to conserve butterflies.